Hey, what's up everybody? This is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and today I'm going to show you how to use the phase and spectrum meters inside Studio One. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions. Um, today we got another subscriber request. This one comes from Vix and Beats. Um, she wanted to know um, a little bit about the phase meter and the spectrum meter. Um, she sent me a message basically saying that um, you know she messes around with the uh, effect, uh, the uh, mastering change inside Studio One, and um, you know they come preloaded with the phase meter and the spectrum meter. And she just wanted a little clarification, which I'm sure, you know, if anybody's loaded those up and you've never seen a, a phase meter or spectrum meter, um, you could benefit from this as well. And basically, um, you know, a meter isn't um, going to put any coloring or, you know, any type of effect on your sound. All this is all it's doing is giving you information about the sound. Um, we typically use these meters, um, you know, when when we're mastering. Um, well, the first one, the first one we'll take a look at um, is the spectrum meter. I have a, uh, I had a session already loaded up where um, it's the, it's some stems that I'm bouncing for a client. Um, what this spectrum meter is is it shows you it you know depending on what channel you put it on i've put it on my on my mix bus it's going to show me all of the frequencies that are being um played um from 20 hertz all the way up to where does this one go to to twenty thousand hertz and the volumes at which they're being played so i'll go ahead and play this track and we'll see it in action So basically what it shows you is it gives you a big um, visual representation of your mix. And that's good sometimes when um, when you're hearing things in your mix and you and you notice that, you know, maybe your frequency is jumping out a lot louder than you would uh, uh, particularly like it to. And you can go ahead and make the correction. If you notice, um, you know, when I played that back, we had a big jump out here in about the 400 hertz range. Um, we'll go just pay attention to this range. This is, this is See, so you notice when that, um, you know, when that auto tune vocal sample comes in, we get a big jump over here and it, it pretty much, uh, is louder than anything that's in the beat um and that and that pretty much um tells us that um that sound isn't in is not in balance um so you know at this point you wouldn't want to grab an eq and correct that because you'd be um affecting all the other frequencies that are that are there but we heard that it happens every time that we that that the voice comes on we seen every time that that voice sample comes on we get a spike here so i would just at that point i would just go and um go back into my mix and you know turn that fader down and kind of fix that and that's what you know that's what this um plugin is really good um at seeing um you have different um views that you can see the sound represented in such as
so as you can see you know there's there's different views um whatever agrees with your eyes um i happen to like the um the FFT curve is, is what I'm used to seeing. Um, it's familiar to me. And um, that's basically that's basically all this is. This is just is to, you know, kind of reinforce what your ears are doing, connect it with your eyes and kind of build that connection from your ears to your eyes. Um, and it's just good practice. You know, you look at it long enough and you listen to enough songs and you analyze them and you'll start to be able to hear sounds and know okay that's a that's in the 500 to 600 range or you know that's a you know that's up at 2k and then um once you start to um you know get that understanding and that type of um sonic vocabulary between your eyes and your ears you'll be able just to hear someone's mix and be like dude you should really cut like 500 hertz out and um you know seem like a genius the phase meter what this tells us is this gives us um, information into the width of our mix. It tells us um, it tells us if something if our mix is just mono, if we have a good amount of stereo separate stereo separation, and it also lets us know if something is out of phase. Um, phase problems really come into play when. Um, you're like recording a guitar amp with um, with two microphones, you know, and they're not positioned correctly. Um, that that may cause a phase issue and that would cause sounds to ca cancel out or you'd be playing something back out of phase. And um, if you have a lot of phase issues in your recordings, it can wind up um, playing an actual physiological trick on your equilibrium to where it'll make you feel um depending on how sensitive you are to it it'll make you feel almost seasick um so you know if, if you're ever listening back to your music and you're listening to it and and you're just you're feeling weird you know and you think something's wrong and you keep turning things down and, and it's not a balance issue you know um it's a, you can always throw a phase meter on something uh, it's good to throw on at the end of your mix just to uh you know check the stereo spread um you know if if you're trying to get this really big wide stereo mix um this and you're not really uh trained at listening for it this will give you another visual representation of that um another thing you want to pay attention to is this meter down here if you ever get into a point where when you play your record um you start to this um this bar starts to dip below here that is letting you know that you have a phase issue and you need to start you need to start soloing all your tracks and you need to find out exactly what is causing that phase issue uh, i'm sorry you need to start muting your tracks um you know mute them one by one mute it and then bring it back in and then mute the next one that way you can find out what track is causing that phase issue and then you can go on to correct it you might need to re-record something you might need to pan it you know there's oh uh, you know a whole uh, other tutorials um worth the information on how to create um correct phase issues um i find with you know using vsts and if you're just doing hip-hop production um you don't really run into a lot of phase issues you might run into it if you're lay if you're layering um different samples um that's where you can run into it like if you if if you chop a sample and you try to just uh, filter out the bass just use the base of that and then layer it over top of another sample um from the same song and you don't line it up correctly that can create phase issues um and that'll tell you by this bar dipping below here so we'll go ahead and we'll play you know we'll play some of this record real quick and you can kind of see how the phase meter um reacts to it
you know, so just from the little clip I played, you can tell that um, a lot of the uh, a lot of the elements are coming straight down the middle. Um, you know, this is this is a track out session. It's not uh, it's not everything isn't really panned like it's a mix session, but that just goes to show like it you know if if you're if you're playing your mix and you haven't panned anything you know it's going to it's going to pl- it's going to um show um the majority of the information these um this you know this blue dust or whatever you re- want to refer to it as it's going to show it coming down the middle this m stands for mono this is your left side this is your right side um and yeah, and if you see that and your goal is for a wide mix, you know, the way to kind of um, to kind of get out into this area is just to start panning things. You know, you don't have to uh, put a whole bunch of goofy um, stereo spreaders and stuff like that on your mix. That stuff can cause phase issues um, if you don't know what you're doing with them. But yeah, just to recap, you know, your spectrometer is going to show you, you know, all, you know, all your different frequencies that are present in the recording and how loud they're being played. It's really big. So you could get a good visual representation of, of, um, if there's any, uh, you know, spikes that you need to go in and fix, um, you know, um, go back, go back to your mix and kind of lower faders. Um, if your room's tricking you, this is what this is really good for. If you're in an untreated room, um, it could help you out a lot with that. And, um, do you know, also play, uh, play commercial recordings that you like and, um, take notice of their, uh, of what their, um, of what they look like in the spectrometer, you know? And that's not to say that if you replicate that shape in here, that you'll have a mix that sounds similar to them, but it's good to see, you know, um, the trends as far as volume and frequency content are concerned in hit records, because, um, regardless of what anybody says, there are formulas and I'll just leave it at that. Um, same thing with the phase meter. So, Anyhow, I hope that helped out. I hope you guys have a have a better understanding of these tools. These are really good stock plugins. They're they're really big. Um, you know, the ones inside Logic are super teeny, even though you can stretch them out. I I really like these. Um, you know, but put them you know put them on your mix bus, put them on your master bus, and use them. They don't take up a lot of CPU, and they can give you a lot of information. Um, just remember, guys, keep it simple. Don't be basic. This is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions, and I'll see you guys on the next one.